Is Diddy so valuable that you get to own a piece of a business without putting any money in to begin with? Yes. Why? I, w I would say because of the currency, the, the actual credibility that I bring to a situation. Hey there, fellow travelers. Welcome back to Black Travelers Network channel, where we are always ready to travel to a new destination. The destination that will be highlighted in this video is Mexico. Why Mexico? Well, it's one of the most important destinations when we discuss the corporate war between Sean Diddy Combs and his former partners that he sued in 2023, Diageo Public Limited Company. Before we get into it, if you appreciate the video, do not hesitate to show your appreciation by clicking the like button. And if you enjoy the content, make it a point to subscribe to the channel. In today's video, I'll be discussing Sean Diddy Combs business ventures and how they relate to a specific travel destination. Travel often opens up opportunities for those pursuing financial advancement through business, entrepreneurship, and investment. I want to emphasize that my focus is strictly on the professional aspect and I do not condone or support any behavior that has been alleged against Diddy. It's crucial to separate a person's business endeavors from the serious allegations they may face and that's where my attention will be directed in this video. Ah, uh, let's travel to Jalisco, Mexico. Jalisco is a western Mexican state fringing on the Pacific Ocean. The state is known for mariachi music and tequila, both of which reportedly originated right there in Jalisco. The capital city is Guadalajara, which is peppered with colonial plazas and landmarks like the Guadalajara Cathedral. This part of the world is most significant in the production of tequila. For starters, in order for a spirit to be called tequila, it must come from one of the five authorized states in Mexico, Guanajuato, Jalisco, Michoacan, Nayarit, or Tamaulipas. Most tequilas come from the state of Jalisco, where the actual town of Tequila, Mexico resides. Even though countries like the United States, Japan, Canada, Germany, and Spain are all actively engaged in the production of tequila, they are doing so in partnership with, in collaboration with, the country of Mexico, which is the world's producer of tequila. What's unique about Mexico is that it is the home of the Blue Weber agave plant, which is the key ingredient in tequila. It takes five to seven years to grow, and some say it can take from seven to 14 years to bring to harvest, and the process is closely monitored. So it's important that if you visit popular destinations in Mexico like Puerto Vallarta, Guadalajara, Reynosa, you should know you are located in tequila country and likely to see agave farms. So what does this have to do with Sean Diddy Combs? Well, in May 2023, Sean Combs filed a lawsuit against the multi-billion dollar publicly traded spirits company Diageo. Sean Combs filed suit through his company Combs Wine and Spirits LLC and claimed that the multi-billion dollar spirits company classified Ciroc and De Leon as black brands that should only be marketed to urban consumers. Well, news broke that Diddy has withdrawn his discrimination lawsuit against the multi-billion dollar company Diageo, which is significant for several reasons. The first reason being that technically Diddy never owned Ciroc. He was more of a brand ambassador, 
a little bit of an affiliate marketer that took them from what he says was around 40,000 cases sold per year to 2.7 million cases sold per year. They're the biggest distributor of spirits in the world, biggest maker of spirits in the world. So the light bulb went off in my head. I said, I don't want to wait and develop nothing. Let me show you what I could do with Ciroc. Let me show you how I could turn your revenue around. They were losing $40 million a year. And I went and turned it around and took it to 2.6 million cases from 40,000 cases. Okay, and so this is something that's never been done. Yeah, clap it up for that. Now this confuses a lot of people because most people thought Diddy owned Ciroc, of which he does not. It's almost like Ciroc was the brand he marketed for Diageo as a way of showing and proving to them that he had the power, the network, the credibility, and the name to turn the brand around. Diddy expressed that when he it came down to his partnership with Diageo, he let the company know early in the relationship of his true desire to own his own tequila company, which is likely why he pushed Ciroc so hard so he would make good on his end of the deal with Diageo, because on their end, they were supposed to support him in owning his own tequila brand. This is where Delion comes into play because people are saying, well, I thought Diddy owned Ciroc. Does he own Delion? Well, yes and no. You see, Delion Tequila brand was founded by a man by the name of Brent Hawking in 2008. And it was purchased by Sean Diddy Combs and Diageo in 2013 as equal ownership partners. But what ends up happening while Diddy was growing Ciroc's market and acquiring De Leon, according to Diddy's lawsuit documents, Diageo was buying up De Leon's competition. They bought Don Julio's tequila, for a little over 400 million in 2015 and Casamigos tequila, which Casamigos was founded and created by George Clooney, Randy Gerber, who's Cindy Crawford's husband and Mike Meldman for $1 billion in 2017. The biggest kicker was when Diddy's team traveled to Mexico in 2021 and listen to this. With Deleon, I still own Deleon. I had to send my people down to Mexico, and this is just to tell you what the fight is about. They went down to Mexico, and when they got down there, they found out that there was zero agave planted for Deleon. So there was no plan for us to be successful. It was no equal treatment. The other brands, they had agave planted. They had no agave planted for me. This is significant because it takes years to grow the key ingredient for tequila, which is blue agave. So May 2023, Diddy launched the discrimination lawsuit against Diageo because he said for years he's argued back and forth with the company regarding the money they were spending on the De Leon brand. Over time, Diageo changed the liquor's packaging, which gave it a cheap feel. There wasn't proper supply of Deleon because there were retailers who wanted to purchase the liquor brand, but it was not available to them. And Diddy began seeing sales of Don Julio and Casamigos increasing while he's asking for resources for Deleon based on their agreement only to be told that the sales of De Leon were struggling, which he says it's due to Diageo's lack of investment in his liquor brand. They had no plans for the brand at all. Ultimately, the discrimination comes into play because he says they, Diageo, reneged on their agreement and 
He's suggesting that they kind of sabotaged it because they labeled Ciroc and Deleon as black brands that's for urban markets, which essentially places a cap on how well the liquor brand could do financially and where it could actually be sold. Now, fast forward to November of 2023. Diddy was hit with a lawsuit by his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, and a few other lawsuits have followed. Rumors are that it was Diageo that many people in the public believe to be behind these lawsuits against Diddy. But I want to be clear, there is no definitive proof. These are only rumors, speculation, and allegations based off of the fact that Diddy sued Diageo. What I can say is this desire that Diddy had to own his own liquor brand has taken a major hit. Everyone talks about Diddy's infamous parties, but if you are selling liquor, parties, entertainment, nightlife is the way to go because the music industry just isn't popping how it used to be when it comes to making money. We know of the famous celebrities that were in attendance at Diddy's parties. We've kind of heard those names throughout the years. But what I want you to understand is the business move behind Diddy's parties. They were important because there were famous names and faces of celebrities who would attend these parties and everyone wanted to party with these celebrities. We do not hear of the retailers, the distributors, the nightclub and bar owners, and the event hosts who were in attendance at Diddy's parties, but it's quite likely that these are also individuals and companies and people who would attend Diddy's infamous parties. This is why Diddy's parties were such a thing, because he sells lifestyle and liquor and a great amount of liquor through his parties. This is also why Diddy made a move to be involved in the media company Revolt TV. Diddy and Andy Schwann founded and launched Revolt back in 2013 because he needed an avenue to market and promote his products, especially his liquor brands. The reason the lawsuit that's been waged against Diddy is such a major blow is because he's known as the king of partying. With the allegations of sexual misconduct, drugs, and violence that's associated with his name, no one wants to be associated with him, let alone party with him. The parties are a major avenue to him selling his products. Remember, he said his dream was to own a tequila company. All tequila roads lead right through Mexico. And with Diddy discovering there were no agave plants in Mexico set aside for his De Leon brand, which takes years of prep work, a major portion of Diddy's wealth and resources have taken a major hit. No one wants to party with Diddy. So for him to attempt to start over with a different set of partners or even to do it on his own, it's really not likely at this moment in time because the parties were likely a critical piece of his marketing and promotion of his liquor brands. In a joint statement, the London-based company and Combs said they have now agreed to resolve all disputes between them. Mr. Combs has withdrawn all of his allegations about Diageo and will voluntarily dismiss his lawsuit against Diageo with prejudice. Diageo and Combs added that they have no ongoing business relationship either with respect to Ciroc Vodka or De Leon Tequila, which Diageo now solely owns. And just a point of clarification, with prejudice, 
means he can never launch another lawsuit of the same claim with the same set of evidence against Diageo. So it now appears that the brand that Diddy owned with Diageo is now solely owned by Diageo. So for those of you who think that somehow Diddy did not get paid by Diageo to withdraw his lawsuit, you are mistaken. Because not only has Diddy withdrawn the lawsuit, but Diageo now owns the brand completely, which means they likely paid Diddy for his stake in De Leon. It's quite unfortunate, but what I will say is this is not shocking. Diageo wants to be what Bernard Arnault is to the luxury brand space. They want to monopolize the market of premium spirits. This is why Diddy should have seen the writing on the wall after years of Diageo not making good on their commitments. You see George Clooney, Randy Gerber, and Mike Meldman, those guys got in, they got out, they sold their brand to Diageo for a billion dollars. Diddy wanted the ownership, which is fine. I understand it. It's what most black people should look to do, but it didn't seem like he wanted to put in money or a whole lot of work to own his own liquor company. Diageo has bought out a number of other liquor companies, which means they are likely going for a monopolistic ownership of spirits. I just don't see them helping Diddy become their competition by helping him and supporting him to own his own liquor company. This was, from what I could see, never going to happen. Not to mention, there are a lot of celebrities who own liquor brands. I saw a list of 63 different celebrity liquor brands. And if we look at tequila alone, which is what De Leon is, the list of celebrities who have tequila brands, I mean, you got singer George Strait, du Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Nick Jonas, Rita Ora, singer Thomas Rhett, actor Christopher Noth. I mean, these are celebrities who own tequila brands. Real Housewives of New York's original cast member, Bethany Frankel, the creator of Skinny Girl Margaritas, who has had her fair share of criticism regarding racist comments she's made in the past. Here's what she recently had to say about this whole thing between Diageo and Diddy. Take a listen. Diddy is suing Diageo. He says they're not paying attention to his De Leon brand the same way that they would a white male owned brand like George Clooney and Randy Gerber. So Diddy, like myself, broke into cocktails before every celebrity rushed in, whether it's Mark Wahlberg, Ryan Reynolds, George and Randy, Cameron Diaz, Mario Lopez, Kendall Jenner, every single housewife, Eva Longoria, the list goes on and on. So he got in early and he invigorated a dying vodka brand called Ciroc. They gave him a per case fee and he did these amazing sort of rat pack type commercials and they were excellent and he crushed it. He made a lot of money. And I invented the skinny margarita and created the fastest growing liquor brand in history. First person to really market to women, first ever low calorie ready to drink cocktail. The key here is that we were first. Now these spaces are crowded. Now because of people like George and Randy and myself and Diddy, tequila is crowded. And you actually believe that George and Randy are on those motorcycles going to Mexico to drink this tequila. You actually knew that I was drinking this uh, skinny girl cocktail because I was as were young women. What's happening now is Diddy wants the same attention in a time when the same attention is not going to be given because big companies like Diageo know that this space has peaked, it's overcrowded, it's popped off. You're not gonna have these wins again. It's just not gonna happen. It, it happened years ago when Patron started it and when I started women drinking clear tequila and it's just swollen. It's not going to have the same 
resonance as it as it did before. I don't think Diddy's going to have a great case. I think it's fake news. I think black owned brands are not paid attention to in the same way as a white owned brand. But I don't think that that's the reason his brand is not thriving. And I know because Beam bought Skinny Girl years ago, then bought Pinnacle, which was also speaking to women, and they wanted to entice a larger buyer. And they don't care anymore about low calorie cocktails because they have their bread and butter, which is their whiskey. And the has their bread and butter, which is their George Clooney and Randy Gerber protect the realm tequila. So we were first, we cashed out, but going back in is a tricky thing. I'm going back in with Forever Young. It won't be the same experience. I'm walking into a new space, Rosé, which is tired and needs a new conversation, but it's not the same as when I invented something that had never been done before. And when he walked in as a black man into vodka, which also had never been done before. It's a different game. I don't think he's got a strong case. I don't know anything about it besides what I'm reading, but I think it's gonna be hard to prove. So there's an argument to be made that Diddy should have gotten out of the deal with Diageo a long time ago. He should have likely considered selling his stake in Deleon to Diageo because it's not like he owned the brand fully and completely take the money from the proceeds of the sale, go down to Mexico and create his own liquor brand and company. That could have been a good play for him. But to be reliant on Diageo to help him own his own liquor brand was really, in my opinion, quite naive on Diddy's part, which is so messed up when you really think about all of the fights he likely had over the Deleon brand because he truly believed that it was his brand. If you enjoyed this breakdown, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen.